Hi, welcome back to the channel. Sometimes I use my full frame cameras in APS-C mode. Why? You would probably ask while shaking your head. Why would you do such a thing? Let us start with the what before the why. In Sony full frame mirrorless cameras, you can always switch between using the camera in full frame or in APS-C mode. This changes your field of view into a zoomed field. What really happens is that in this APS-C mode the processor uses only a part of the sensor. This part is the same size as an APS-C sensor as found in the A6000 series. For photo you always sacrifice megapixels in this cropped mode. For video this APS-C mode is called Super 35 and it's used more commonly. And you might want to consider that the full frame A7 IV automatically snaps it to Super 35 mode when you switch it to 4K 50p or 60p. In that latter case, why not put your trust in a lighter, wider and often cheaper APS-C lens? Why? You get an extra reach equal to the crop factor between full frame and APS-C, in the case of Sony, times 1.5. This means the focal length of your lens, which is for example 50mm in full frame, becomes 75mm in APS-C. The advantage for photo is that you can turn a 600mm lens into a 900mm lens without teleconverter and without loss of speed, light, quality, okay. You keep the rich full frame colors, the dynamic range and all the bokelicious advantages of full frame. And you get 100% coverage for the AF points. I often use this technique to turn a full frame prime lens into a pseudo zoom. With one lens you suddenly have two focal lengths at your disposition. Great during events, while hiking or in a photo booth. Why not crop afterwards, you might ask. Honestly, I prefer to make the picture in camera the way I want it. This way, my vision at the moment of shooting will not change afterwards in the editing room. Besides, it's easier to get your focus and composition right if you do it in camera instead of afterwards, but this is a personal choice. If you want a smaller kit to travel, fly or hike with, you can use APS-C lenses without any vignetting. APS-C lenses are smaller and lighter and often cheaper. Evidently, you can also use a full-frame lens in APS-C mode. You can even use an APS-C lens in full-frame mode if you accept the vignetting. Then there's file size. In APS-C, you use less megapixels, so your files become smaller. Handy when you're running out of memory card space and even handier for your post-processing workflow. Why make a big picture that needs plenty of megabyte if you only need or want part of that image? But that's my logic. First of all, you lose megapixels at the rate of the crop factor. That's a big negative point. The formula for Sony is full frame megapixel count divided by 1.5 divided by 1.5 equals the APS-C megapixel count. As you can see, the A7III's 24 megapixel become 10.6 megapixels in APS-C. So even though that's perfectly usable for online content, in 24 megapixel cameras, I only recommend APS-C mode for photo in case of memory card lack of space. Worst case scenario, you can use the Passlabs Gigapixel AI software to upscale your stills. The A7 IV's 33 megapixels become 14.8 megapixels, which is more than what you get out of an A7S III in full frame mode very usable. The Alpha 1 and A7R4 and 5 are beasts, even in APS-C. Any other negative comments? Well, you can crop a large image into a smaller one, but you can't enlarge a small field of view into a larger one. So always think about the image you want before making it. Personally, I program the APS-C full frame switch to a button. This way, with one push of a button, it changes your field of view for both photo and video. In this video you see how, and where to program this, in the Sony menu. Just give it a try, and decide for yourself. Was this clear for you, and useful? Then do like the video, subscribe for more videos, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section, and I'll see if I can answer them. Namaste, and till next time.